Hey everybody, I've got a nice little bonus episode here for the middle of the week. This is some content that I was trying to fit into the last two videos and there just wasn't room to fit it in because of all of the awesome information that I found about Mexico City and the United States flags. Before we go too deep into the series though, I think it's worth talking about the aesthetics of flags. Like any other hobby or special interest, the study of flags has a name. It's called vexillology and it has people that are very passionate about it. The largest organization of vexillologists in the world is a group called the NAVA, the North American Vexillological Association, and they put out a pamphlet about 15 years ago. It is a 16-page document. It's free. You can find it online. And they outline the five points of what they think is the easiest way to delineate between a good flag and a bad flag. So the five guidelines as outlined by the NAVA are as follows. Number one, keep it simple. They should be so simple that a child could draw them from memory. And I don't have any children nearby, but I'm gonna test this on myself. So real quick, let me try from memory to draw the United States flag and the Mexico City flag. Here we go. So this is what I came up with for the United States flag. And aside from the fact that I'm really bad, even at 30 years old, at coloring in the lines, I think I did a pretty good job from memory. I got all 50 stars, I have them in the correct layout, and I have the correct pattern of red and white stripes. So this is what I came up with for the Mexico City flag. It was very difficult to get all of the detail in there. If you actually look at the real coat of arms, they actually have individual bricks on the bridges and on the castle. And God knows drawing a Spanish lion is incredibly difficult. I, I kind of made my, um, my prickly pear cactus pieces. They look a little bit like turds, uh, but that's another thing that's, that's quite difficult to draw. Also, if you look I don't think I got each direction. The, the actual prickly pears point in different directions on the flag. It's very confusing. So why is it important to keep flags simple and make them so easy that a child can draw them? Think about how flags are used. Most of the time flags are seen from very far away on a flagpole or draped over a building. So a flag should be something that you can recognize what it is, even if you're only able to see a part of it because of the way that the wind is blowing or because of how it is hanging on a flagpole. So based on that criteria, I would say that the United States flag is a good flag because it's very easy to recognize even from far away, even if you just see the stars or just see the stripes. On the flip side, the Mexico City flag, the actual coat of arms is rather small on the flag and there's just so much going on there. But depending on how that flag is sitting on a pole, you may not even see the coat of arms. It might just look like a white flag. All right, rule number two is use meaningful symbolism. The images and colors should relate to something symbolic. It shouldn't just be there for the sake of being there. In this instance, I would say both the US flag and the Mexico City flag do a good job. The stars and stripes represent all kinds of things from honor and valor to rebelliousness. The Mexico City flag is a little less subtle, but you can dive a little bit below the surface and talk about how that represents Spain taking over the home of the Aztecs. Rule number three is use two or three colors maximum. The United States flag has three colors and they are all arranged in a way 
that they, they stand out against each other without clashing with each other. On the Mexico City flag, we actually have four colors if you include the white on the field of the flag, and we also have yellow, blue, and green in the coat of arms. Also, some versions of the Mexico City flag use red for the eyes of the lions, which would give you five colors for the flag, and, and that would be too many. All right, so rule number four, according to the NAVA, is no lettering and no seals. Put simply, they feel that this is cheating, but it does kind of defeat the purpose of a flag. A flag, again, is something that is supposed to symbolize your entire country or your entire state or your whole organization instantly, visually, from a distance. And if you have to put a seal on the flag that says the name of your country or the name of your city, then you're kind of not using a flag anymore. You're using a logo that just happens to be on fabric. The US flag has no lettering and no seals on it, so the NAVA would say, good flag. The flag for the city of Mexico is literally just a seal. It's just a coat of arms. So the NAVA would say, bad flag. All right, and then rule number five is be distinct and unique or be related. So we don't want to simply duplicate other flags. We don't want to copy what is already out there. On the other hand, you can use the symbology or the color of your flag to pay deference or make a, a reference to another flag. The US flag is very similar, as we showed in the episode about it, to the Grand Union flag, which in turn was similar to the Union Jack. And so there is a logical through line there showing that the United States used to be a colony of Great Britain, but it is still unique in its own right. On the other hand, if we look at the Mexico City flag, the coat of arms is somewhat unique in and of itself, but the actual imagery on it is just taken from other Spanish heraldry. The castle is the same as on the coat of arms for the King of Spain, and so is the lion. The only thing that's truly unique about it is the prickly pear cactus leaves. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that by the NAVA definition of aesthetics, the US flag is a good flag and the Mexico City flag is a bad flag. Again, this is all entirely subjective. If you don't like the USA flag, that's fine. If you really like the Mexico City flag, that's fine too. I have kind of fallen in love with the Mexico City flag. It's a big mess, and I think it's kind of badass to see the lions mounting the castle like that. Again, symbolically, I don't really agree with what that represents, but aesthetically, I kind of like it. Ultimately, this is just a guide. It gives us a common ground language to talk about when we are looking at the aesthetic of flag. So as we go forward into next week's episode about Tokyo City's flag, we can think about these in the back of our mind and say, is this a good flag? Is this a bad flag? Do I agree with the consensus opinion on it? And all of that fun stuff. All right, see you guys on Saturday for the Tokyo City flag. Remember to like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more flag facts.